we celebrated the feast of St. Mary's Assumption or Revelation of Assumption yesterday and today we continue with the same theme. Part of the Gospel today is the mentioning of St. Mary in the middle of the Gospels. I remind you, we talked about this before, that St. Mary was mentioned at three strategical places in the Gospel, in the beginning and at the end and in the middle. In the beginning, in St. Luke, when he started the Gospel with St. Mary, the Annunciation, Archangel Gabriel came to tell her she's going to be the mother of Christ. At the end, at the foot of the cross, when she was standing there, and then Jesus looked at her and said, Woman, behold your son. And he pointed, and I, I think he was talking about John. In the middle is when she was following him with his brothers. Here, brothers in the, in the area of uh, Lebanon, Israel, is his cousins. You know, maybe we don't know this, but tradition says Salome is the sister of St. Mary. Salome is the sister. She's born of Joachim and Anna too. And Salome is the wife of Zebedee. So John and James are the cousins in the tradition, and cousins of Christ. And then also there is Miriam, who is uh, a cousin, who had four boys named in the Gospels, St. Mark and St. Matthew, James, Judas, Joseph, um, and the fourth one, I forget, and his name always. But the four, they're called the brothers of Christ, although they are the cousins. Because in the, at the cross, there was this other Mary, the, the wife of Cleopas, the wife of another disciple of Christ. Remember the two disciples were going to Emmaus on the morning of the resurrection, Jesus walking with them, and one of them was Cleopas. Cleopas is the husband of Mary, the cousin of St. Mary. It was very closely connected families. In those days, towns and villages are small, they're not big. And families live together. So in Galilee, in Nazareth, there was groups of families living. You can imagine that. They're all connected by marriage. So Miriam, the other Miriam, is the wife of Cleopas. Salome is the wife of Zebedee. And this is a closely connected family. Apparently, the, the children of Cleopas used to accompany St. Mary and to, to kind of take care of her as Jesus is going around. She's going around, and they are going around with him. So at the end of this gospel, they are showing up at one of the meetings at the door and the people say oh it's very crowded here but i want to tell you one of the people or two of the or three uh, your mother is standing at the door with your brothers so this is the the, the middle of the gospel that say mary is there in the gospel at the beginning at the end at the, in the middle today jesus speaks about and when he was talking he was talking about a house divided a house divided and i want to tell you how the readings are connected. It's very interesting to think about it this way. So sometimes a person comes to me in confession and says, Abuna, I don't know how to deal with my passions. I have no control over my senses. I can't really control it. And the thoughts that come bombarding me, they're very, very strong and very vicious. They don't leave me alone until I do what they tell me to do. I'm a slave, Abuna. And in the back of my mind, I said, most probably, most probably, 99% of the cases, this person had not learned to submit, which is very weird. Who knows how to submit to authority over him will have a perfect control of his senses. Seems very weird, though. How can a person who learned to submit be able to control his senses? A person who is rebellion with his parents, a person who is rebellion to his guide, will have no control over his passions. This is from the beginning. This is not, not something new. I'm not teaching something new here. When God created Adam, he created him in his image, the image of God. We were made in the image of God, and God said, this is very good. But in the two things that God gave to Adam, in the beginning that was his image, the freedom of choice. He didn't control his choices. He didn't create him like animals with instincts. Animals have instincts. For them, they eat when they are hungry. They stop eating when they're full. If you go to a lion or a lioness, and they just eat in, 
they wouldn't look at you. That's why the uh, people who take care of lions in the zoo, they know you have to feed them and then you can approach them. But if the lion is hungry, don't come near him. That's instinct. They cannot read you with instincts. But humans, why? Why we see that? We see people losing control over their eating. They have lost control over their appetites. Appetites are completely out of order. Why? Because the humans is a house divided. House divided. So God created them with free choice. That's his image. And what is the second one? He created them authority. When he created them in the minute, he created, as Adam is coming out from the dust, waking up, he said, take dominion over the earth. Take dominion over the creation. I want you to be my image to them. That's why it was easy for animals to come to Adam and treat him like their father, their caregiver. They were not afraid of him. You hear in the garden that Adam actually is naming the animals. Well, how was that done? God said to the animals, go to him. He will tell you what your name is. They go to him and he would say, you're, a, you're called a dog. You're called a cat. You're called a camel. You're called whatever. So how did he get this authority as an image from God? Because he was under God's authority. He was in the presence, in the presence of God. It's yours, I think. Can disconnect this one. If you can disconnect this one. If he is, it's this one. I think he's disconnected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn it off. So, if he is under authority of God, he will have perfect dominion of creation. But what happens when Adam disobeyed God? Do you see today? Do you see like animals come to you? And except if you force a, a dog, you buy a dog and you feed it and, or a cat, it will come to you. But other than that, animals run away from us. I remember this image from, uh, from my college days. They used to cross the, the, the bridge over to the, 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 between me and between where I live in, Do'i and, the, in Mania, the, where the School of Medicine is, there's a bridge. And I cross it every morning and uh, every afternoon going and coming back. And this bridge leads to the slaughterhouse the government slaughterhouse, and there was a, always every morning, especially on Thursday, I remember a group of camels. The man, a man leads a group of camels with a red stamp on them going to be, they eat camels in Egypt. So they go to the slaughterhouse to be killed from Giza to Cairo. I remember that and I will never forget it. One camel makes a U-turn and run with all its speed, run frantically jumping over cars and jumping over people. And I said, that's a smart one. <laughs> he knew he's not going for something nice. He's not going to be fed. All right, so we are becoming very dreadful to humans, to animals, and to each other, of course. Why? Because we lost our authority. We don't have it. And we lost our authority over our own self. And that's because we have lost the submission to God. So let me tell you about why this is important, because in the reading today, in the readings today, we have the first part is from St. Paul. And St. Paul speaks about the, uh, what we call schisms, people who refuse the authority of St. Paul as an apostle, and they want to teach something different. And he said, beware of those. And he said about them, they speak nice words. They actually very attractive in their talk, but they're going to take you away from the church and they will divide the church. We hear about this, it happens all the time. You hear about a priest, you hear about a deacon, you hear about someone, talks very nicely, attracts people, and then all of a sudden he takes them away from the main church and wants to have their own group. It happens all the time. It happened recently. And it becomes a big a pain and big ache in the church. It keeps happening over and over again. The second thing from St. Peter says, wives, submit to your husbands and husbands submit, or slaves submit to your masters, servants submit to your, uh, your bosses, even the evil ones, even the evil ones that don't really uh, act nicely. Why is he saying that? Because of our own sake. When we are under authority, we submitting become in authority. That's the secret. So today Jesus in his uh, talk 
in the gospel, was standing there and then he, he actually casted demons at the beginning of the, that chapter that we read, the last part of it, the casting demons. And people started to follow him. He started to heal. This is the beginning of the gospel. This is Mark chapter 3. And people started to gather. Big crowd. Very big crowd. And uh, what happened is that the Pharisees actually was very intrigued. So they traveled from Jerusalem down to Galilee or up to Galilee. Galilee big distance on foot or by mules or whatever. <clears throat> they came there and they saw this. And then Jesus brothers that I told you about heard that he's stirring up a big crowd and he's making disciples and he's sending them and now he's going through the towns. They said, oh, 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 wait a second. He's getting out of control. We have to lay a hand on him and bring him back. You know when you have somebody crazy in Egypt, what do you usually do? They tie him up, take him to the psychiatrist, put him in a hospital. That's what they wanted to do with him. They said he's crazy. He's out of his mind. That's his cousins. The Pharisees said something different. They couldn't do that. The Pharisees are not his family. What did they say? He's not crazy. He has a demon. He's demon-possessed. He's having a demon to cast demons with. And Jesus said, that's division. If a house is divided against itself, it cannot stand. This is the big rule that you and I have to listen to. The house means husband, wife, and children. But the house is also me. When I am actually at rebellion, I am rebellious against authority. That's why the apostles are talking, don't be rebellious. You're undermining your own authority. If you don't submit to what God has given you, if I am a child with parents and I don't really submit myself to the parents, I am killing my own authority. I am bleeding my own authority. And don't complain when you come and say, I can't control my lust. I can't control my, my food, my appetite. I can't control this, I can't control that. The monks had, had learned this. They learned this pretty much. They said, the best way to reach control of your senses and yourself is to learn humility, submission. Humility cannot be learned without a person in my life that actually represents the authority to God, of God to me. So in, God, in the garden, there was nobody. It was God. It was the Lord. Christ comes to visit Adam and Eve. He gives him the commandment, and he leaves and comes, leaves and he comes. And they, are got, they got used to that. But then when they are, he's not here, they're tempted to revoke, to repudiate, to cancel that control. So what happens when they did this? Who lost? Did God lose anything? No. God didn't lose anything. They lost. They lost their authority over themselves. They lost authority over the animals and the, the nature that God gave them. They lost authority over everything. And in the, in the prophets, in the prophets, in uh, one of the best pieces, I think it's from Micah, when, the, when Micah said, what would the Lord ask of you? What would the Lord ask of you? He said three things. Do mercy, acts of mercy, love justice, and walk humbly with your Lord. Walk humbly. What does it mean to walk humbly? That I will submit myself to God and to whoever God puts in my life as my guide, as my gear, caregiver, as someone who takes care of business. This means I am humble with my parents. I'm humble with my authority if I am an under authority or a boss at work. I don't really think of myself better than them, even if they are not good. I, it's not my job to judge anyone. It's my job to submit. Unless they ask me something that is against the commandment of God. And when I do this, this is the secret that you can be on top of yourself. Don't ask to, to have a charge of your senses and your appetites when you yourself are not submitting. Because any house divided cannot stand. That is the rule. You want to be smart. You want to do things right. Don't complain. Go and do the work. And the work is to act humbly. And this would teach us also humility in prayer. When we are humble in prayer and we're submitting, we get grace. For God gives grace to the... Uh, answer this one. God gives grace to the... Humble. humble. And he resists the... 
proud. Thank you. God gives grace to the humble and resists the proud. This is a rule. We cannot really break it. We cannot remake it. We cannot put rules like, like that. So you want your house to be in order and have energy. Act in humility. That's why I want to end with St. Mary at the end. Why is St. Mary brought here? Because how you can think about humility and not bring in St. Mary? When she, to the angel who appeared to her, she said what? I don't understand. It's very difficult. It's a mystery. But behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your saying. All her life, she was that submissive. She's a queen. And she knows that she's a queen, but she was submissive all her life. She never had resisted the word of God or people that took care of her. They told her, you have to go to the, to the temple. She went to the temple. You have to come out of the temple and get married. She got out of the temple and got married. You're going to be the wife of Joseph. She's going to be the wife of Joseph. You're, oh, oh, stop. We're not going to do anything with this. We're going to have to have you as the mother of Christ. Oh, I'm going to be the mother of Christ. I am the handmaid of the Lord. It's the perfect image. That's why she is loved. She has a lot of grace, and that's why she is full of grace. If she is full of grace, according to our equation, then she is full of, what's the key word? Humility. humility. If she is full of grace, then definitely she is full of humility. That's what the point is. And glory be to God, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.